I'm super excited to be here. And uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, our motorcycle dealership and in particular the um, some, uh, employment opportunities in the service department. And I'll touch on um, some other uh, opportunities that we have here also. And um, I know I have uh, kids that are a little bit older than you, and I know they've done Zoom meetings and they don't like to ask questions, but I really encourage you guys to ask questions. If anything comes up you have a question about and you want to do it through the chat or come on and do it, you know, please do it. I'd be happy to answer uh, almost any question you guys could have. Um, so I, I'm going to look to the side every once in a while because I do have some notes. Um, so bear with me if I my eyes go off the uh, screen. but. Um, I first wanted to give you a little bit about my background, kind of how I got involved in the business. Uh, I grew up down in Los Angeles, and I had uh, pretty good grades in high school. Um, didn't know what I wanted to do, but my dad was an engineer, so I thought, well, I'll go into engineering school. And I went to college down in Santa Barbara and uh, got pretty good grades in high school. Um, when I went to college, I, um, to be honest, was more into having fun and didn't have the best of grades and uh, kind of barely made it out of college with an engineering degree. And um, that really hurt me when I got out of, out of college. They do look at your grades just like they do in high school and um, ended up getting a job as an engineer down in Southern California. And I did that for 16 years. I was a mechanical, I had a degree in mechanical engineering, worked as a civil engineer. About six, 15 years ago, decided, you know what? I don't want to be an engineer. Uh, I want to own my own business. So I got involved in the motorcycle business. Uh, and that's a whole other story how I got involved, but um, this is my second dealership that I've owned. I owned one in Napa, sold that one, and and for those of you that um, don't know where we're located, we are right across from Sam's Club and the Crown Plaza Hotel on Concord Avenue. And I would encourage you guys, if you haven't been here, um, uh, please stop by and visit the store. Say hi. Come and ask for me. Let me know you're, let, you're on a Zoom call. I'd love to give you guys a tour and talk a little bit more about the store. Um, so uh, let's see. What? Um, let me describe the business. So we are a motorcycle dealership. And what that means is that we, um, our main business is that we sell motorcycles, ATVs, scooters, and side-by-sides. Um, and we're actually made up of four uh, separate businesses that we call departments that are all uh, kind of intertwined together. They um, work off of each other, they rely on each other, but they're four kind of separate businesses within the store. Um, and I thought what I would do is kind of walk around with the computer. And so I'll probably, you won't see me, but I'm going to kind of describe, give you a little tour of our dealership, talk about the different departments, and then we'll come back here and talk a little bit about the service department. And then I'm going to go back and give you guys a tour of the service department, kind of show you what it looks like, where the guys work. Um, uh, as I, before you came on, I mentioned that we're closed today, so it'll be kind of quiet in here. You won't see anybody working, but normally it's pretty bustling, especially this time of year with the sun coming out and the weather getting nice. This is really our busy season. So anyway, I'm going to turn uh, the computer around. You won't see me for a couple minutes, um, but I'm going to talk a little bit. Uh, you may see me, but I'm going to more let you guys see what's going on. All right, so this is the front of our uh, dealership, and I'm just going to kind of pan around to show you some of the different vehicles that we sell. Uh, these right here are we, what we call street motorcycles. So these are motorcycles that can be ridden on the street. Uh, you have to have a driver, a, a motorcycle license to ride them, and they also have license plates on them. So they're similar to an automobile. Um, and if I'm going too fast, somebody just let me know. But I'm going to kind of pan around. These are some more of our uh, motorcycles that we sell. These are kind of our entry-level motorcycles. Uh, we also sell touring bikes, like this large gold wing here that weighs around 700 pounds. Um, we don't have too many dirt bikes in stock because they're super popular. But here's one of the uh, dirt bikes that we happen that we sell right here. Um, we also sell electric scooters, kind of a new uh, niche that we just got into. And I'm going to pan around and show you some of the cruisers that we sell that are right here. Um, these are some of our, some of our uh, high performance motorcycles, these red and 
uh, blue ones that we saw right here. And then over in the corner in front of the glass, I'm not sure if you can see, we also sell some ATVs, which are four wheel vehicles. Um, and then by the door here, we also have what we call our side by sides. Um, and as I mentioned, so our dealership is kind of made up of uh, four, uh, four different departments all combined into one. So the first department we have is our sales department. So we have, similar to a car dealership, we have uh, salesmen. So when you come into the store, if you're looking to buy a motorcycle, they'll help you out, answer your questions, um, sit you on the vehicle and help uh, with the transaction. And the reason I bring up the different departments is each department has, requires different skill sets for people. Um, so we have the sales department, which they help people purchase motorcycles and ATVs and scooters. We also sell parts and accessories, which are over here. We have some jackets. We have behind the motorcycle, we have some helmets on the wall. This is the cashiering station. Uh, behind the wall there, we sell spark plugs and oil and tires and really anything you'd need to ride a motorcycle. And in this department, it's a different skill set that's required. Uh, so that's the second department. We have the sales department, the parts department. Third department is the finance department. And there's only one person in that office. And I'll open it up for you here. And what the finance office does is he helps people get approved for, mo for loans to purchase a motorcycle. Uh, not everybody has the cash to purchase one, so they need to take out a loan, and the person in the finance department helps with that. Lastly, down the hallway here, and we'll go down there in a little bit, where it says service department on the wall, that's where you, a person who is getting his motorcycle service would come check in at the counter there, and I'll take you down there behind the wall through the door and show you where the actual uh, service department is. Um, so we have the sales department, the parts department, the finance department, and the service department. Um, and all, again, like I said, all four of them take different, uh, different skill sets. Um, the sales department is, takes somebody who likes to talk to people, likes to help people, you know, sit on, get on the correct motorcycle. Um, parts and accessories department helps people figure out problems. Somebody will come in and say, hey, I have this issue with my motorcycle. What can you recommend? to help um, uh, fix it or make it better or what kind of jacket do I need if I'm gonna wear gloves or helmet. And then the finance department has to be very detail oriented because they work a lot with numbers and calculations and getting people approved on loans and things like that. And the service department is what we're gonna talk about mainly today is very hands-on. Those are people that like to work with their hands. There um, may be people that don't necessarily like to interact with other people. They like to do their own thing. They like to solve problems also. Uh, they like to work with tools um, and that like to get their hands dirty. That's really um, the uh, main um, uh, component of the service department. So those are the four uh, businesses that we have or departments that make up our overall business here. Um, bear with me while I look at my notes here. Um, so they, today, let's talk about the service department. So the main thing we're going to talk about is mechanics and technicians. Those are the guys that actually work on the vehicles that we sell here. In addition, there's two other people that I have working in the service department. We have a service manager who kind of oversees the entire department. And we also have a service advisor. And what the service advisor does is when a customer comes in and says, um, you know, hey, I need to get my tire changed on my motorcycle, he'll come into the counter. Uh, they'll write them up a repair order on the computer, ask them some questions, give them an estimate and let them know about how much it's going to cost, have him agree to that, and then the customer will go away, we'll take his motorcycle in here, and we'll put it in on the schedule. Sometimes we'll work on it that day, sometimes we'll have to order parts. Um, so we have the service advisor, service manager, and I'll show you where they work, and then we have the mechanics or technicians. We kind of interchange that word between the two because some people refer to them as mechanics, some we refer to them as techs or technicians, but it's kind of the same uh, position. So how do you become a mechanic at a, at a um, motorcycle dealership? There's two main ways um, that that can occur. One is going to formal training, which would be a trade school, 
Um, there used to be two of them. One went out of business. The remaining one is called MMI or called Motorcycle Mechanics Institute. Um, and if you just Google that online or Google MMI, you can get all the information you need. Uh, there's two locations, I believe. There's one in Phoenix, Arizona, and then there's another one that's in the Midwest. I, I don't remember exactly where that is, but if you guys are interested afterwards, just Google MMI and they'll be able to get to all the information on that. The other way is just hands-on training. Um, a lot of guys will get into the business because when they were young, their dad worked on automobiles or worked on motorcycles, and then they kind of grew up. Um, I think Shirley mentioned that some of you guys ride, ride dirt bikes, and you may already be working on your bikes yourself, changing your oil or changing the chain and sprocket or putting an exhaust on or doing things like that. Um, and that's, that's, and we have five full-time mechanics and it's about 50, 50 where a couple of them went to MMI and a couple of them just kind of learned on their own from their, their, their dad or grandfather or something like that. Um, a lot of people get into the industry from the automobile industry because there are some similarities as far as working on cars and working on mo on motorcycles. Um, but the main thing that uh, that people have that work here is, and this is generally in all the departments, is they, they enjoy the industry. They have a passion for riding either an ATV, a side-by-side, -side, or, or a motorcycle. Um, and uh, I think the reason I enjoy it is it's a fun fun place to work at. Uh, when I was an engineer, I used to have to wear a suit and tie every day. Now uh, I'm kind of casual today because we're closed, but normally we'll wear, you know, a short sleeve button up shirt. Um, during the summer, I wear shorts. Our mechanics don't wear shorts. They have to wear pants and, and, and appropriate safety gear. But being the owner, I can, I wear shorts during the summer. And uh, it's just, it's a fun place to work. People are excited when they come in here because they're getting a toy. It's an enjoyable um, what do during the day. Um, it, it, it can vary dramatically what they do. And I just, I just have a list of some of the things that they um, do. Uh, first off, what do we work on? We work on motorcycles, both dirt and street motorcycles. We also work on side-by-sides. And again, if you guys have any questions on what these vehicles are, just let me know. I'll, I'll turn the camera around and show you. Um, we work on ATVs, scooters. Uh, the other thing that people uh, can work on in our industry is um, uh, jet skis, or they're called personal watercraft, uh, or jet skis. Those are the things you can take out on the water. They have a handlebar. They can seat two to three people on them. Uh, we don't work on those, mainly due to lack of space. Because we're in a shopping center, we need to uh, have everything in at night. We have no outdoor storage, and we just don't have the room to work on um personal watercraft but in our industry you can definitely work on those uh so what are some of the things we do uh, we change tires we perform a pre-delivery inspection on all new vehicles so we're going to sell them uh, like the green dirt bike i showed you guys earlier um, that comes from the manufacturer partially disassembled because it has to get shipped over from japan we have an outside company that reassembles the motorcycle for us and then delivers it to our store once we're ready to sell it, we need to make sure all the bolts are tightened, it has oil, it has gas, the battery's charged, and that's called a pre-delivery inspection. So our mechanics do that. Uh, we do numerous of those every day. On uh, last Saturday, we sold nine motorcycles, so they were doing, they had to do nine of those in addition to all the other work they had planned. Um, we also do oil changes, we replace brake pads, we perform major services. Uh, we also do complete engine rebuild, sometimes uh, a piston or something internally to a motor will um, have an issue with it. And we've had to, you know, take apart complete motors and uh, depending on what the job is, we'll assign it to the mechanic who we feel is best skilled for that. Um, we have different levels of mechanicals. They're typically, typically called A, B, and C mechanics. Uh, your A mechanic is the guy that can work on anything. I can give him any job back there and he can he can solve any problem he's probably seen everything he'll have maybe 25 30 years experience um, but to become an a mechanic you don't it's not just based on years of experience it's based on your knowledge and then we have b mechanics and then we have c mechanics or more of our entry level mechanics guys that have maybe one to two years experience that are just getting started in the business um some of uh so other thing i was going to talk about is 
Um, there's also ongoing training that we have. Uh, some of the OEMs, and when I refer to OEM, that, ref that um, is Original Equipment Manufacturer, or Kawasaki, Honda, Suzuki, Yamaha, those are what we call OEMs. So the OEMs have ongoing training, whether it's uh, in person, like pre-COVID, we used to be able to do live training where we would send our mechanics for uh, Honda, for example, down in uh, Southern California. They would go down there for a week and they'd have uh, numerous classes that they could work on, some specific, some are very specific, some are general. Um, but I, as the owner, pay for them to go down there and it benefits the store and it benefits the mechanic by them uh, getting more training especially as there's more advances in motorcycles. Uh, 30 years ago, motorcycles were uh, mostly two strokes, super easy to work on. Now, most of them have computers, several computers on them. There's fuel injection, there's traction control, there's ABS, there's all kinds of complex systems they're getting into motorcycles that require more, more training and knowledge for, for the, the uh, mechanics. Um, we also have online training. That's what we've been doing a lot of lately because we can't uh, send people to do the uh, outside training. Um, there's also kind of a mentorship program that we have. I have a couple of younger uh, mechanics who have maybe two to four years experience and they observe and learn from the older mechanics that have 20 to 30 years experience. Um, it's real nice to have that, the different age groups there. That way they can ask questions and um, really learn from, from experience of seeing other, uh, what others are doing. Um, the next thing probably everybody usually wants to make is what, what, is a, what does a motorcycle mechanic get paid? What do they make? It can range uh, dramatically depending on your experience. I would say probably 30,000 to 70,000 is the range for a motorcycle mechanic. Um, and there's a couple ways you can and the other rate we have is what's called flag hour or commission, meaning the more work you perform, the more you get paid. Um, most of our, our guys are on a hybrid where they get paid both hourly and commission. Uh, the commission is good for the mechanic because if they can do something a little faster uh, than we estimated, then they could um, uh, earn more hours in a, excuse me, earn more hours in a day and it also helps out the store. So that's um, kind of how we pay our mechanics. We also have the normal um, uh, benefits. We have a 401k plan, which you guys probably aren't familiar with, but when you get out in the job world, you'll be excited about that. We have paid insurance, uh, paid days off, kind of like other industries out there. Um, let's hey, Dave. see. Question? Hey Dave, can you repeat the, um, the Salary range, I got kind of cut off, so you can. Oh, okay. Uh, salary range, it's around thirty thousand dollars to seventy thousand dollars a year. And the reason there's a big range is because you have the guys that are, uh, and I say guys, it, it, there's definitely women in the industry too. I'm using guys in the generic term. Um, there, it's thirty thousand for a year entry level, and seventy thousand. We have one uh, one of our mechanics who's got about thirty to thirty three years experience, and he earns in the seventy thousand dollar range. Um, so the other thing I wanted to touch on uh, is why are academics important? Uh, you know, hey, I just want to be a motorcycle mechanic. Why do I? Why is school important? Well, even, it, it, even in, as a motorcycle mechanic, there's a lot of science that we use um, as far as reading gauges, calculating things. Um, a lot of being a motorcycle mechanic is problem solving um, because when people drop off their motorcycle, other than just a service or a tire change, say they'll, you know, my, they come in and say, hey, my bike won't start. That's a common one we get. So the, motor, the mechanics know from past experience, there's, there's a list of things they'll check. You know, first they'll make sure, is, does it have the battery? Is the battery charged? And if, and if the battery's charged, then we'll go on to the next thing and on to the next thing. So there's a lot of problem solving involved in being a mechanic um, because it's not just as easy as he says, you know, somebody comes in and says X and you know, okay, well, I'm gonna do Y to take care of it. Um, there's kind of, you go step by step through what you think may solve the problem. And obviously as a mechanic, you want to try to get it done as quickly as possible so you can work on to move on to the next, on to the next job. 
Um, and that's where the experience comes in is the guy who's been doing this for 30 years has probably seen that problem. And he, he may know just to jump right to this to fix it. Whereas the newer mechanic has never seen that problem. So he's going to go step by step and it may take him longer to do that. Um, okay. I've spoken a lot. Any questions before I go back and show you guys the actual service department and kind of more specifically what the guys do? I do have a couple. We can do questions at the end also. Yes, Shirley. I have a couple questions, um, but it's up to you. Do you want to do it right now or do you want to ha answer them at the end? Um, you know what? We can answer it. We can answer them at the end. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll take the camera and we'll go over and I'll show you the actual service department and kind of talk about some of the things back there. And then maybe I'll come back to the desk here and we can answer some of the questions students have. So come with me. So right now we're leaving our main showroom, going past the bathroom, down the hallway. Can you see okay through the camera? Yes. Okay. So when somebody comes in, we, there's two ways they can come into our service department. If they've been here before, we've kind of trained them to come in this door right here. And this is our, uh, the back of our building. We have a red awning here and we have a door where they can kind of uh, come in and this is the service counter. So this is where the service manager and the service advisor would work. And this is uh, essentially the check-in area. They'll come up to the counter. Um, we'll get some information off the motorcycle. They'll do the work on the computer, uh, write up the repair order. They'll give a copy of the customer and then they'll give a copy to the mechanic. And then back here, see if I can do this without hitting myself, it's a two-way door. So this is our service department. And um, I wish we were here during the day because normally, and if you guys could picture, almost every single motorcycle you see here is going to be outside. Um, unlike a car dealership, we can't leave these motorcycles outside because they'd be out in the weather and there's a chance they would get stolen. So at night, we have to push in every single motorcycle that you see here. And then every morning, we push everyone out. Um, this isn't bad. Normally, like on a busy day, I can't even walk back here. You're literally having to climb over motorcycles to get in and out of here. So if you could picture the area without any of the motorcycles here, this is kind of where the mechanics work. Um, and I'll show you this as an example right here. So this is a uh this happens to be a bike for uh concord police department this white one that i'm showing you right here and what the motorcycle is sitting on is what's called a lift so in the auto industry cars are a little higher off the ground so you just drive your car into the mechanical work on your car for motorcycles just so the mechanics aren't on their hands and knees and leaning over all day we have these lifts and I'll put the camera down here. And as you can see, there's um, a hydraulic scissor, not hydraulic, they use air underneath. And what they do is they raise, they drive the motorcycle up on the lift, secure it, and then they'll raise the lift up using air. We have an air pressure system here. And then, this, then the mechanics can work on the motorcycle. Um, I'm not sure what we're doing on this particular one, but um, typically mechanics will have uh, two lifts. So this is another motorcycle right here. And as you can see, we have, we're starting to take apart the, the engine. I'm not sure what we're doing on it, but we're doing some major work on this one. And the advantage of having two of these lifts or stations is that the, the motorcycle that I'm showing you right now, we may have gotten inside and realized, oh, we need to order some parts. Well, so the mechanic has something to do. He'll have a second motorcycle over here that he can continue to work on. Um, uh, a couple other things. So you see this uh, hose right here. What that's for is a lot of times we'll need to start the motorcycle. And because we're indoor, we don't want the exhaust or fumes to get in here. So we have uh, up here, if you can see, we have a ventilation system and a fan. So when they need to start a motorcycle inside, they'll um, turn on the fan system. And bear with me, I'm gonna try to walk over here to show you. Uh, here's a little stool. So sometimes if he is working on a bike that is on the ground, he doesn't have to sit on the ground. And in front of me, these are the toolboxes. So 
This is uh, Tom's toolbox. And between the, tool, the two boxes and the two tools, he probably has around $50,000 invested. Um, let me see if I can open one for you. So, yeah, the mechanics are required to own their own tools. And this is something that, you know, he's built up over a lifetime. You know, Tom's been doing this for probably around 30 years or so. And each one of these drawers has specific tools in it that um, have different functions for him. Like here's all his uh, box open end wrenches that he's got, et cetera. Um, Tom isn't one of our neater guys, so he's got a lot of clutter up here. But a lot of a lot of times mechanics like keeping. You'll see he's got a ton of little bolts and nuts and something that he may need on a on a later job. Um, this is another mechanic's uh, workstation. Um, also, each mechanic has his own computer, you'll see, and this is what they'll use to either do their online training or all the manufacturers have uh, websites that we can go to to look at service manuals um, or specifications. And let's see, I'm not sure what else I can show you in the service department, but that's kind of, I wanted to kind of give you a feel of where what it looks like where you work um here's another example this is a uh this actually i think this one's for concord police department also we do a lot of work for concord pd this is a what's called a dual sport motorcycle so it's a dirt bike that you could ride on the street and we do their basic servicing for them actually this may be for the city of san francisco no it's concord um but the city of san francisco has a similar motorcycle um so anyway, let me try to weave my way through here without stepping on stuff also one of the big things about um working in the service department or really working anywhere in the store is, is safety and we talk about this a lot they have weekly safety meetings the service department does one thing i was just going to show you that's kind of interesting is this is an emergency eye wash station. And normally, like I said, during the day, you'd be able to get to it. Uh, this is in case they should get something in their eyes. They come over here, pull down on that green, uh, excuse me, gray lever, and it shoots uh, uh, an eye wash solution into their, into their eyes. Um, but that's, that's one of the big things is that we're really big in, into safety here. Uh, one last thing. So we do a lot of tire changes, similar to an automobile shop. So we have our own uh, tire equipment here. Um, this is, we have two tire changing machines right here. And we also have, if you can see it behind the ATV, we have a tire balancer back in this corner. Again, all these mo motorcycles during the day are out of here, if you could picture that. In the very back wall, we have a battery charging station. And on the left, where you see the red table is our, where we do work on suspension. Um, this roll-up door also opens also to give us some ventilation. Uh, one of the nice things about our service department is it's got um, uh, heating and air. A lot of service departments do not. Our old location, if any of you were at where we were over near Chili's, um, did not have heating or air. So during the summer, it got super hot in there. They'd have the doors open and the fans going. But uh, right now, we can turn on the heating and air. So that is kind of all I was going to show, and I think all I had to talk about. I'm going to come back out here to the desk, and um, I'd be happy to answer any questions anybody has or kind of go into any more detail about anything else you like. Thank you. Before I ask any questions, do any students want to unmute themselves um, to ask a question? If not, I can go ahead and get started with the chat. I'll give about 10 seconds and then I'll get started. Okay, let me just, um, so a question we have is where do you usually recruit your employees from? And then what do you look for uh, characteristic wise when hiring them? So um, interestingly, the, uh, the main place we've got our employees from is Craigslist. Um, it's kind of become a, just it's, I don't know why it's just that's where we've gotten most of our mechanics. Some of them we've gotten just from 
guys showing up and moving to the area and, hey, I'm looking for a job, but a lot of them is through Craigslist. Um, also, and just a shout out to you guys, those of you that are interested in motorcycles, we're probably going to be putting an ad out there for a porter. Um, so I don't know what your work schedule is, but we're probably going to be looking for a part-time person to help in our service department in the afternoons and probably full-time during the summertime. So check for that on uh, Craigslist. Um, what do we look for? Um, obviously, in, in, for the service department, we would like to have some experience. Um, in our other departments, we can train you, whether it's our parts department or our sales department. But for service department, we do look for some experience. And that's uh, whether it's through the MMI, going through the formal training there, or you've worked on bikes with your dad or, your, or yourself for the last five, six years, and you have some raw experience that we can do some additional training on. Um, what is a side-by-side -side vehicle? So a side-by-side -side vehicle, let me, I'll probably, it's probably easier to show you. So a side-by-side -side is, let me make sure I can get it in the camera. You know what, bear with me, let me turn the lights on. All right, I didn't realize how dark it we have was there. Let's see if you can see right there. So that is a side-by-side -side. and it's, it's kind of dark in here, so it may be hard to see, but if you go to our website, ContraCostaPS.com or Google Contra Costa Power Sports, you'll be able to see. And the reason it's referred to as a side-by-side -side is because you sit side-by-side. -side. Um, it is a, it's a kind of a new um, type of vehicle that the uh, manufacturers came up with um and there's two different there's there's a better view of it uh the one in the red is a thousand cc it'll do probably about 65 miles per hour actually they're both thousand cc uh this one we've added kind of a windshield an led light bar and some other um one which is right here and then they also so make what's called a sport side-by-side. -side. Um, we don't have any in stock right now, but those are ones that can go maybe 75, 80 miles per hour. Um, crazy fast, but a ton of fun. Um, but anyway, that's what a side-by-side -side is. Thank you. Good and question. then the next one is, what is your top selling bike? Uh, top selling bike for street bike would be the Ninja 400. Uh, it's an entry-level bike, starts around $5,000. Uh, for dirt bikes, it would be a Honda CRF 50. And for those of you guys that have ridden dirt bikes, you probably grew up, started riding on a CRF 50. Um, and it's for uh, kids. We've sold them kids as young as a year and a half. Oh. Um, you can get training wheels for them. Uh, you'd have to have training wheels, but uh, you can put training wheels on as long as they can walk and they have the, some dexterity. Uh, I don't know if I would put a year, year and a half old on it, but um, some people have chosen to. So those are two, probably two most popular ones. Wow. Um, why did you personally get interested in motorcycles instead of cars or airplanes or anything like that? And then about what age range do you think your shop sells most to? Um, so I got involved uh, actually by um, coincidence. I, I think I told you guys 15 years ago, I was looking to get out of engineering and I had a friend at church who had a business plan and he was looking to get open a motorcycle dealership up in Napa. Um, I had a little bit of money saved up. So I basically became an investor with him. I was going to be a silent partner and let him run the dealership and continue doing my engineering work for a little while longer. Well, about four months in, we realized that he was in way over his head and needed me to come on full time. So I quit my job as an engineer and started in the motorcycle business. Um, I live out in Clayton and I was commuting from Clayton to Napa for five years. It was 55 miles each way and I got real tired of doing that when this store came up for sale and that's how I bought the store um, here. What was the second part of the question? And then what is, uh, about what age range do you think your shop sells most to? 18 to 25 or 25? You know, um, it varies. I, I mean, fortunately for us, it varies. Uh, we have, you know, we have the younger kids, especially during COVID, we've been selling a lot of small dirt bikes to kids, your guys, age, your age range in the, you know, 
15 to 20 year old range. They're bikes that are designed for kids in the six to eight year old range, but they're affordable and guys were bored at home and they've been buying the small kids dirt bikes. Yet we, and then we also have the people that are the baby boomers that are in their sixties plus that are, that buy. So there isn't really a one age range. Fortunately, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll sell it to anybody that wants to buy one. Um, how many bikes do you sell on an average a, a year? A year, um, last year we sold, what did we sell? We sold around 830 motorcycles. Um, this year, like as an example, last month we sold 99 in March, uh, which was a good month for us. This month we'll probably sell close to 100. Um, but it's not consistent throughout the year. There's definitely March through October, November is busier. Uh, February and November are pretty slow. Christmas is bu- or December is busy because of Christmas, but then you have January, February that kind of slows down a little. So it's it's our business is what we call seasonal. It's not consistent throughout the year, um, and that's one thing as far as our employees that they need to understand that too is that if you go to salary, you're going to get paid the same thing every week or every month. Um, such as school teachers, you know, they have a, a consistent income. Whereas in our business, because most of our employees are paid on a form of commission, they get paid more during the busy months than they do during the slower months. So they just need to, they need to you know, understand that and budget their money, um, not spend it. If they, if they make a lot more during the summer, spend it all and then not have you know, enough money during the slower times to, to live off of. So the mechanics don't have a base salary rate. I know some of the mechanics like a Toyota had a base salary rate and then commission on top. So even if they didn't hit their hours, they would still get paid their base salary rate. It doesn't work like that in that shop. No, it does. Yeah. So okay. we have, um, yeah. So there, there's, there's um, uh, employment laws where, you know, there's uh, minimum wage, which um, if you guys have started working yet, you understand there's minimum wage. In, uh, in, I'm trying to remember, I think twelve dollars, twelve dollars and fifty cents in California. Um, we pay we pay more than that because we need um, uh, we need the, their skilled positions for service mechanics are what we call skilled positions. So we need to attract people that have skills and to do that. We need to pay more than that. So there is a minimum hourly that they would get paid, um, but it, it's way more than the minimum wage. Okay. Um, what are your direct task or what does a day-to-day look work life look like for you so for myself is much different than the mechanic um myself you know a lot a lot of times i'll come in and know that know what i'm planning on doing and then it'll completely change like on saturday i was out delivering motorcycles i went out to vacaville i went to bay point and i went to martinez delivering motorcycles we sold um other times when our uh facilities maintenance guy is in here i'm in cleaning the bathroom um but i'm also my wife is uh does the accounting for us and she's a cpa so now during tax season i'm doing accounting which i never thought i would be doing uh on friday the girl that does the receiving for us so all the parts and accessories i showed you come in via fedex and ups and we have to check them in put price tags on them and then put them out for uh for sale well, she um, didn't come in, so I was back there receiving boxes from UPS and FedEx. Um, what I try to do is help uh, is to manage my managers. So each department has a manager, and I try to work with them and figure out, you know, what do you need to be more successful? What can I help you with today? But as the owner of a business, you kind of need to do whatever it takes and whatever's necessary. You need to be willing to do that also. Do you take any interns and how old do you need to be to work there? Uh, you need to be six, uh, 16 years old. Um, and we, we don't really have an intern program, but sometimes we do have, like I mentioned, a porter. We were going to be hiring a porter. And that's, um, in fact, Ricky, who's our uh, youngest mechanic, started as a porter with us. Um, he had some uh, motorcycle skills, but started as a porter and kind of worked his way up. And now he's one of our full-time mechanics. So we definitely do have, we have that position, like I said, that will probably be advertising in the next month or so. Is there a busy time of the year for the service? I think you went over January through, oh no, Christmas time. But is there a 
busy time of year for the service department? And then what do service techs do when, if things are slow? Uh, during the, so the busy time for the mechanics is probably going to be during the summer. So probably June, July, August, those are our busiest months, even though in the sales department, it's, um, March, April, May. Um, but during the summer is the busiest the service department. We, we try our best to keep everybody busy. Uh, we're fortunate to have five mechanics, which is quite a few, uh, quite a bit for the size of our shop. And we try our best to keep everybody busy every day. Um, not, not this past winter, but the prior winters we've had to, for maybe a month or so, have guys go home, work maybe four days instead of five days a week. Um, but that's really uh, the service manager and service advisor. They're responsible for bringing the work in, and we really try to make sure we have enough work coming in to keep the guys busy. Um, we'll also bring in what we call projects to work on during the winter. Um, bikes that have a lot of issues that are going to take a lot of time. We'll work on those during the winter, or sometimes uh, we'll buy a used bike that needs a lot of work on it, knowing that we'll have time during the winter for the mechanics to work on it. Um, but we try our best to keep guys uh, going. Uh, we're open 39 hours a week, so full, that's our full time. Um, I know there's not any mechanics there, but do you know of any uh, challenges that they face? Um, as a mechanic? Um, you know, that would probably be a better question for them. Um, you know, uh, some of them may be, uh, may be the income, especially living here, just to be honest, in, in the, the Bay Area, it's very expensive to live. And um, 30 to 70,000 may seem like a lot, but when you live out on your own, it's not. Um, it's, it's tough in California. Um, uh, I'm trying to think most, a uh, couple of them are married and their spouses work also a couple of them live like Ricky lives at home with his parents. And, uh, that, that's probably would be the biggest challenge is that the cost of living here in, in I think you cut off a little bit, Dave. Can you still hear us? Oh, sorry. That's okay. I think you're back now. Yeah. What was what was the last thing you heard? Um, Ricky lives at home. <laughs> oh yeah, I was gonna say Ricky. So I said that's probably the biggest challenge is that the is the is the cost of living in the Bay Area versus what a mechanic gets paid because a mechanic uh, the income for a mechanic is it probably doesn't vary a large amount across the country. Um, so, you know, if you want to be a motorcycle mechanic, there may be places with a lower cost of living that may be easier to live being a, as a mo motorcycle mechanic. Thank I, I think this will be the last question, but, um, if you could tell any of the students, any, um, advice of what they should be maybe working on right now, if they want to get into the industry, what would be some recommendations you can give to our students? Uh, uh first off is finish high school finish strong in, in high school um, because the more education you get, the more options you have out there. And, you know, you may decide, you may think now, Hey, that's, I, I want to be a motorcycle mechanic. That's all I want to do, but things may change in your life. And the more education you can get, whether it be in high school or college or through a trade school gives you more options, options in life. Um, but if you are interested in, in getting in the motorcycle industry, I would, I would look at, uh, and you don't have a lot of hands-on training, uh, like I said, go to MMI, Google them, um, and at least you could see what an option is out there if you like to get involved in the industry. Well, thank you so much, Dave, for coming to speak to our students on behalf of MDUSD and Greg um, and all of the students in the Auto Pathway. We, we're so grateful and thank you for doing this for us. It was really a big learning experience, at least for me, and I'm pretty sure for everyone else on the call.